How does a pilot hold a steady glide path? Manual control requires effort and attention. Instead, there are trim tabs to hold the right control surface position. Now the pilot can focus on other things for safe landing. Trim tabs are adjustable surfaces that deflect elevator position to hold steady flight, whether it's during takeoff, landing, or cruise. This aircraft appears to be in a trimmed cruise state. Trimmed means steady state flight, or a type of equilibrium for the otherwise dynamic system. The definition of trim can vary depending on the type of aircraft, flight conditions, and the overall flight objective. In cruise, trim is non-accelerating, non-rotating, steady state flight held at constant altitude. Physically, this means the forces and moments about the center of gravity sum to zero while holding flight path angle to zero. On the glide slope for landing with a common rate of descent somewhere between 10 and 20 feet per second, the aircraft is also trimmed. And in the final moments before landing, the aircraft flares its trajectory. This usually involves pitch up, reduction in airspeed, and a reduced rate of descent for safe touchdown, again requiring a type of steady state flight or trim condition. During the glide path, the aircraft is still trimmed in the sense that it's non-rotating, non-accelerating, and in steady state. The configuration is often pitched down with reduced throttle. Again, the forces and moments about the CG sum to zero, but this time with negative flight path angle. Individual trim conditions correspond to flight conditions in a much larger flight envelope. At each mock altitude point, there's also an array of angle of attack and angle of side slip points that constitute multiple separate flight conditions. But it's often the case that only a subset of the breakpoints, also referred to as flight conditions, can be trimmed too. Note that each mock altitude, angle of attack, and angle of side slip is a different trim condition. That corresponds to a different linearized model that has different dynamics and therefore pertains to a different linearized flight controller. When an aircraft takes off, performs its objectives, and lands, it's traversing through the breakpoints of the trimmable conditions. Automatic trimming is the automatic adjustment of trim tabs or control surfaces in response to the changing flight conditions. It allows the pilot to traverse the envelope more rapidly because they don't have to manually trim out forces and moments. This means the pilot workload reduces and their attention can be focused elsewhere. Thus, the pilot can operate the aircraft for longer without fatigue. For an autopilot, it means that a model-based linearized flight controller can be updated about changing trim conditions. And as a result, it's a step towards enabling unmanned flight. In general, the less ability to trim at a flight condition, the greater the tendency to dynamically diverge from that condition, regardless of control effort. So while there are exceptions, the statement, if you can't trim there, you can't fly there, holds a lot of truth. To develop an aircraft control system, we must be capable of trimming the aircraft and obtaining the linearized dynamics so that we can tune the controller for that flight condition. After tuning the controller in a linear setting, we evaluate it in the nonlinear simulation and then retune as necessary. Ultimately, the goal is to develop a robust flight control system or autopilot with adequate performance. Therefore, how we obtain linearized models over a wide range of flight conditions is necessary to model-based control development. To obtain the linearized dynamic models, we start with the nonlinear aircraft simulation. Then we find an equilibrium or trim state and linearize the dynamics about that equilibrium. This produces a linear model that can be tuned with linear control methods as you have seen in previous sections of this course. Mathematically, we have our nonlinear dynamics of the form x dot is f of x and u. And then we seek the linearized dynamics x dot is ax plus bu. So that in this linear form, we can apply the wide range of available linear control methods and analytical tools to tune the controller to adequate specifications.
To obtain the linearized model, one can apply Taylor series expansion and numerically determine the df dx and df du terms, which are the A matrix and the B matrix of the linearized system. Note, the linearized models are actually in terms of delta variables, where delta is a difference between the actual state and a state x star and the actual control and the control u star. These star terms are trim conditions, and the Taylor series expansion is about the trim condition. Canceling terms, x dot is f of x and u at trim, and neglecting higher order terms leaves the linearized system. How do the linearized dynamics fit within the trimmable envelope? To be clear, each flight condition pertains to a different trim condition and therefore different linearized dynamics. Now, do we need to trim, linearize, and design a controller at all breakpoints? Not necessarily. If the linearized dynamics are similar over a neighborhood of breakpoints, a common controller based on a single linearized model in that neighborhood may be sufficient. There are many ways to define a trim condition. Here we'll define one for the longitudinal plane. The first thing we'll do is specify what we want to trim to. We prescribe the aircraft velocity vector with its magnitude or airspeed VT star and its direction. Since trim assumes steady flight, the velocity does not change and V dot is zero. Going forward, we'll need the earth fixed horizontal axis and the aircraft body fixed axis along the fuselage. Let the aircraft trim to a pitch angle theta star. Since the aircraft is non-rotating, theta dot is zero. Since the velocity vector direction is constant, we also trim to angle of attack and angle of attack rate is zero. Since pitch angle and angle of attack are trimmed to, flight path angle, theta minus alpha, is prescribed through angle of attack and theta. It follows that flight path angle rate is also zero. Since theta dot is pitch rate when confined to the longitudinal plane, the trimmed pitch rate is zero. And again, since there's no acceleration, the trimmed pitch rate derivative is zero. Finally, because the trim condition changes with altitude, the trimmed altitude h star is specified. However, note that h star dot is not necessarily zero, since here flight path angle can be non-zero. To trim to these conditions, we will trim with certain variables. Here, it's the elevator and the throttle. In short, the state variables are trimmed to desired values and trimmed with elevator and throttle. Note, it's not necessarily the case that trim with variables are only control inputs. Other trim definitions will trim with both control inputs and state variables. So the question is, how do we determine the values of the elevator and the throttle that corresponds to the desired trim state? We can pose the trim objective as a problem statement. That is, find the trim with values of the elevator and throttle that minimizes the performance index J which is a quadratic function of airspeed, angle of attack, and pitch rate derivatives. The coefficients C1 through C3 are just scale factors to emphasize one term over another in the minimization. We want to minimize J where airspeed, altitude, flight path angle, pitch angle, and angle of attack are specified trim to conditions, and where the longitudinal flight dynamic equations relate both the trim with and trim to variables. The longitudinal equations are shown here, but their detail will be covered elsewhere. We can write them as functions f1 through f5, where we're showing the dependency on 
the state variables x and the control input variables u. And then as functions just of x and u, and even more compactly as f of x and u. So finally, we arrive at the problem statement for trim. Find the trim width values of elevator and throttle that minimizes the cost function j, where the trim two variables are specified, and everything is constrained by the longitudinal equations. How do we solve this? We'll use an iterative minimization routine. The approach is specify your trim two variables. Specify your initial guess for the trim width variables. Apply the minimization routine to J with the flight dynamics specified. Obtain the trimmed result from the minimization. Assess the validity of the result. And if valid, then accept and store the result. The nuance is assessing the validity of the trim result. There are two main things to consider when assessing how valid a trimmed result is. First, the minimization itself could fail in the sense that it stops at a local minimum. To avoid this, one can adjust the weights C1 through C3 in the cost function J or even start with a different initial guess. Now, suppose the minimization does find the global minimum, the true minimum. The other issue is that the aircraft may not be physically able to trim according to our definition of trim. J may be small near zero, but even small values in state derivatives can cause rapid divergence from the desired trim states. It's good to check the cost function J. It's good to check the trim state X star, and it's important that we also check the trimmed state derivative X star dot when assessing the validity of the trim condition. We'll first trim to an aircraft cruising in steady state. We specify the trim two variables, alpha, theta, pitch rate, and gamma, all as zero with altitude of 25,000 feet. We can attempt to trim at various speeds, but the aircraft will have a tendency to trim best at a specific speed. In this example, we'll vary the trim to variable VT or airspeed to determine the most successful trim to state for the cruise phase of this aircraft. Here we are now in the aircraft simulation. We're going to set the directories so we can run this simulation and use the trim package that's just newly added. Here we are running, up, running the setup script. Uh, this is version 1.7, and this package is available on Patreon as well as with videos that explain how to use it. Here's our trim sweep script. Uh, it outputs X trim that contains the trim to and the trim with variables all in a single vector. In running it, it loads a vehicle model, it loads details about a simulation various plot flags and animation flags or options. Pointers to keep indices on vectors straight, avoid bugs. And then down to the crux of everything really, our trim to variables and our trim with variables that are guesses. Let's just run this for the variables that are there. And we are trimming to 500 feet per second in the configuration just shown previously. And we see our trim two variables are what we specified. And then the trim width, about three degrees of elevator and 13% throttle. The cost final is about one one thousandth. And when we look actually at the angle of attack dot though, we see a problem, 2.3 degrees per second. So while airspeed and pitch rate will tend to stay at their values, the angle of attack is actually going to diverge uh, 
based off of this result. So this is an example of a minimization that was successful from the algorithm, but not so physically successful from the standpoint of actually achieving a trimmed state. And we'll run the simulation now to show what the aircraft does as it's initialized from that trim state going forward in time with no other changes to its control or environment. Now remember VT dot was zero and zooming in flat, right? So that's consistent. Pitch rate dot was zero and, and again, consistent. No change initially. But here is where the 2.3 degrees per second of alpha comes in. It's that slope. That's 2.3 degrees per second, essentially. You extrapolate that line, and you can imagine you know, extending the scale of this and getting up to around what we had in that result. The elevator, the thrust, they're all held constant. And because that angle of attack is increasing, the velocity vector is dipping below the aircraft fuselage, and so the altitude is decreasing. That's why that's happening. Okay, so what we'll do now is adjust the airspeed to find the most physically realistic trim condition. And in essence, what we're doing is we're treating airspeed, even though it's defined as a trim to variable, us adjusting it in an iterative fashion to minimize J is treating airspeed like it's a trim with variable. We could repose this problem definition so that it would automatically determine the airspeed elevator and thrust that would perfectly achieve this cruise state. So watching that alpha dot as we update the airspeed, getting it down more and more to the preferred trim state of this aircraft at 25,000 feet. So about 3.3 degrees of elevator and about 49.5% throttle. Now let's assess this in the nonlinear simulation again by substituting in that trim state as an initial condition for the aircraft. Updating the model, running the simulation. It's just gonna integrate forward over one second and boom, things change, but look at the scales of the plot. I mean, essentially it's, it's no change. This would not be perceivable in any way by an individual on that aircraft. The aircraft is uh, effectively in a steady flight condition in a trim condition over that one second. The truest trim state was found at 822 feet per second or Mach 0.8 with 49.5% throttle and 3.3 degrees of downward elevator deflection. We now consider trimming to a glide slope. A few differences here. The landing gear is down in the model. The flight path angle is negative according to a desired three degree glide slope angle. And the body is pitched down as well. We look for the most suitable trim state following a glide path. All right, we're at 1,500 feet altitude with a flight path angle of negative 3 degrees and an airspeed of 250 feet per second. The pitch angle here is zero, so the fuselage is still horizontally aligned, and we see the th thrust is about 34.4% elevators tilted upward about 18 and a half degrees. We'll reduce drag on the fuselage by decreasing the pitch angle theta. Basically make the angle of attack which is three degrees now we're gonna make it two degrees and watch what happens to the throttle 
Uh, it's consistent with reducing the drag as we need less throttle. You know, reduced it by quite a bit there, down to 31% throttle. And then now zero angle of attack gets the throttle down to about... about 27%. And it is a fairly successful trim condition with the angle of attack rate really just about a quarter of a degree per second. We can get that a little better by manually adjusting the trim to airspeed. Same as we did before with the cruise. No, fairly good trim condition here. Now, one of the other considerations is how valid this trim state will be all the way through the glide path. So now at 3,000 feet, we see still fairly small alpha dot. And going down to 100 feet where we might transition to the flare path, still a fairly small alpha dot. And notice the small changes also in elevator and thrust. So it seems this single trim condition could be valid throughout the entire glide path. The glide slope trim state is determined. Here we show how a sequence of trim states can be determined with the trim sweep tool. Here we are with the cruise configuration and we're setting flight path angle from minus three in increments of a half of a degree to positive three degrees. And the script is set up with a for loop to step through those flight path angles and store that trim array and plot the results. And so you saw us just turn on the plot flag and you can see the results step through the command window. and then the plot's produced. We find that the minimizer successfully exited at all flight path angles. The exit flag value of one indicates a successful minimization to within the tolerances of the algorithm. The cost function j is small for all trim conditions, but the most physically successful trim is at zero degrees flight path angle. This condition is the same as the cruise condition we determined earlier. Observe the change in the trimmed state as the flight path angle increases and the angle of attack decreases. From this exercise, we observe that to climb faster while holding airspeed constant with zero pitch angle, the airframe increasingly deflects the elevator downward and increases the throttle. We've covered trim and in the next section we will proceed with landing guidance and control. This is in the future section 1.6.2 where for landing guidance and control, the goal can be broken down into a guidance objective, which is to follow the glide path, and a control objective, which is to regulate the flight dynamics to a trim state consistent with the rate of descent. Then, to transition to the flare path guidance and control, where the aircraft pitches up to slow down, reduces the rate of descent, and touches down safely. A sincere thank you to my patrons, who gain access to all the codes for all my lessons and more. Your contributions over the past months have greatly contributed to my website renewal fee so that all may continue to access learngnc.com. This is Flight Control Fundamentals, Section 1.7.